thank you for having me here. So I'm going to talk a bit about uh, image understanding, and in particular, I'm going to focus on semantic segmentation. So semantic segmentation consists in recognizing uh, the objects appearing in an image, and also to delineate those objects. So another way to, to look at this problem is by, uh, so given an image, an input image, we want to classify each of the pixels uh, among a set of classes. So this is uh, an example of that. So first of all, one question uh, would be, why are we actually interested in segmenting objects? So it turns out that this, uh, it has uh, many different applications, and I'm going to briefly talk a bit about a few of them. So one application is to help uh, partially blind people. Uh, and this is actually one of the projects we are uh, working on in our group. So for that, we have a special set of glasses uh, that uh, are able to uh, project information in the glass. And then we use semantic segmentation to uh, highlight the main uh, elements of, of the scene. Another application where uh, segmentation is useful for is uh, to allow intelligent agents to interact with the environment. And that is uh, useful, for example, for well, any kind of agents. For example, uh, cars, automa uh, like, uh, automatically driven cars and drones. Uh, it is useful for that to, to recognize uh, the area of, uh, of the road, where the trees are, where people are, and so on. And also, well, for robots in general to interact with objects in the, in the environment. A different kind of uh, um, application comes with different kinds of images. In this case, for example, we have uh, medical uh, kind of uh, images. Uh, in this case, uh, well, semantic segmentation have been applied, uh, for example, to segment different kinds of tissues, uh, like uh, segmenting uh, brain tumors and dental cavities in teeth. So, okay, um, we've, we, have, we have seen that uh, segmentation is uh, useful for some things. Now the question is, how uh, do we actually perform semantic segmentation? So, of course, we need to we, we uh, start from uh, convolutional neural networks because uh, they are really uh, they are great at learning uh, good representation of, of uh, images. Uh, but we have to keep in mind that uh, semantic segmentation requires a very particular kind of output. So the output is structured, uh, and therefore uh, uh, convolutional networks by themselves m may not be enough to to get a uh, good performance. So starting from the beginning, uh, we start uh, looking at the fully convolutional neural networks. Uh, they, have, uh, they were first described in this paper by Long and others in the context of semantic segmentation. Uh, this network consists in a set of uh, layers, a set of convolutional and max pooling layers, followed by a set of deconvolutional layers that upsample the representation of the image back to the original size. So at the end, uh, we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the pixels in the, in the input and the output. Uh, see, a similar approach was also developed by Harry Haran, kind of simultaneously, and also related ideas can, in fact, uh, can be traced back to, to the 90s uh, by paper, in papers in, by Lecun and Benjo. So fully convolutional networks uh, work really well, and at the time where they appeared, uh, they uh, became the state of the art in semantic segmentation in different benchmarks. Uh, but one issue that we saw is that uh, the results that we get using this model are like the one that we see in here. So they, they present a poor object delineation. Uh, in the sense that, for example, in, in here we see that uh, we have uh, some meaningless blobs and we are not quite able to recognize the shapes that are produced. Therefore, our objective here is to um, um, introduce this spatial consistency into our model. So in order to do that, we rely on conditional random fields, uh, CLFs. Uh, they have been around for like 15 years, and they are useful for uh, inference uh, structured kind of outputs, which is particularly what we want to do here. Uh, they are based on minimizing um, um, a function like the one that we see here, where p is the, um, the prediction for all pixels in the image. Uh, and then the first term, term uh, uh, measures the, uh, the predictions for, for each pixel independently. And then the important bit uh, comes with the second term. 
so the, the second term favors uh, smooth solutions, consistent solutions, by penalizing uh, that similar pixels have different labels. So uh, within the context of conditional random fields, there are many uh, methods, many approaches that have been proposed. Here we focus on one that uh, was developed by Krahenbull and Colton. And roughly speaking, the, the uh, purpose, of the, the key point of this approach is that um, pixels that are, <coughs> uh, it's famous that pixels that are close to each other and have similar intensity, similar colors, uh, tend to have the same class, tend to be predicted uh, using the same class. Um, this is the algorithm that Krahenbull and Colton came up with. So the first thing we did in our work is to express each of those steps as layers in a convolutional neural net. So let's start doing that. Uh, by the way, we have this I here below. It represents the raw image, the RGB image. Then we have uh, Q is the current estimation of the pixels, of the predictions, and then U is the Euralis. So first, the first step in the loop, in the, in the algorithm, uh, inside the loop, is message passing. This is a key step. This is where uh, the predictions are propagated across uh, pixels uh, around, and pixels have similar uh, intensity color. And this is effectively done by, by using a bilateral filter. Uh, next, we have uh, uh, we weight the output of the previous step, and that can be done uh, by using a convolutional, uh, regular convolutional uh, layer. Um, following step is the compatibility transform. Uh, at training stage, uh, this step is able to learn how, com how uh, likely it is for two glasses to appear together. So for example, um, sofa and airplane are, are, more, uh, are less compatible than sofa and, pe and person, for example. So that should be, the model should be able to learn this in, in this step. Um, then we add the unary potentials. And finally, uh, there is a normalization there. So that is done by using a softmax layer. So this consists in this is one uh, iteration of, of the algorithm. We can put, uh, put all this together in a uh, random field iteration. Um, and one important point to note in here is that, well, the last four blocks, the last four layers, uh, are pretty standard in uh, deep learning uh, frameworks. Uh, it turns out that also the first one, the bilateral uh, layer, is also differentiable. So therefore, we can do back propagation through the whole pipeline. Uh, now we can implement the whole algorithm in the, we saw previously. First, we have the softmax. This is the initialization step that we saw before the loop. And then we see, uh, well, we repeatedly do the, the iteration of the CLF, where we, uh, we uh, refine iteratively the solution until convergence. So because of this loop, this, uh, this in here, this unit is a recurrent unit. And that's why we call this uh, conditional random field as a recurrent neural net. Again, we can see that all uh, the elements here are differentiable, so we can do back propagation. OK, so now we can put all pieces together. So uh, you first start, we first started using a full, fully convolutional network. Then we take the output of that uh, as an input to this uh, conditional random field, as an RNN. And uh, we also uh, introduce the original image um, in, uh, into the, the CRF in order to uh, calculate the bilateral filter. And finally, we get a prediction. So we have tested uh, our uh, approach against uh, other different methods. And here is uh, the results of some experiment. Uh, the approach in the left is uh, the one that I have described before the, by Long et al. Is, is just using the fully convolutional network. The second one is, uh, is by Chen and others. And what they do is to use a conditional random field as a post-processing method for the fully convolutional network. And then uh, here is our approach. So the difference between our approach and, and the one by Chen is that we do uh, end by end, uh, end to end uh, learning of, of the whole pipeline of the, of the two blocks in there. So we think that that is uh, important, or that is useful because in that case, uh, the weights that are learning in the fully convolutional network can be adapted uh, with respect to the behavior of the second block, with respect to the behavior of the conditional random field, and vice versa as well. 
So uh, the, re the results that are reporting here are, uh, well, the measure is intersection of a union, so the higher the better. And we can see that our method uh, performs uh, better than the others. So we have also implemented a demo, an online demo for this. Um, uh, I encourage you to, to have a look at that and try uh, your own images. The demo and the, uh, well, and the implementation of the approach have been developed by Swaisen, Sadib Yasumana, myself, and supervised by Filtor. And in the following, uh, I'm, going to, uh, well, I'm going to show a few examples that uh, you can obtain with this. So this is a good example uh, where the network performs really well, uh, where it's able to segment several cats. This is another good example where it's able to segment different kinds of objects. But well, the network doesn't work well. The model doesn't work well always. Sometimes it fails. One, one kind of uh, mistake is uh, when it classifies an object as something else, as it is the case in here, where, it, where the cat appears to be uh, a bird. A different kind of uh, error happens whenever the object is, uh, is uh, properly recognized, as it is the case in here, but the segmentation is, is poorly done. But these kind of errors are less common. Then, uh, well, there are also other trick examples. Uh, like, for example, in this case, we have a painting, and still we see that the network is able to do decently well. And this is another trick example, <laughs> or where well, it's a mixture between bird and dog and something else, and the network is able to do that. Uh, yeah, quite a decent job. OK, so I would like to end that talking briefly about instance segmentation. So, so far, one, th one issue that I have omitted is that uh, pixel level classification uh, doesn't allow us to distinguish between different instances. So, for example, in the, in the image that we see here, uh, we see a set of boats. If we apply a, seg a segmentation model, uh, uh, a good segmentation, segmentation model, we can get a solution like that, where blue represents the boats, so it's correct. However, we cannot distinguish in the, in the output how many boats we have or whether different pixels belong to different boats. So because of that, we would like to get something like this as well, which is useful for counting the number of elements and, and uh, like, yeah, treating each instance separately. So for that, we're using a different kind of uh, recurrent neural net. So in this case, um, the main point is that uh, the model is able to extract and to segment a different object at each time. So some, something like this, and, and so on, until the whole image is uh, completely cemented. So yeah, that covers pretty much everything I wanted to say. Um, so the main points are that, well, we've seen a semantic segmentation. It's an interesting problem, and it has many applications. Uh, we have seen that convolutional networks, are fully convolutional networks, uh, are a really good starting point, but they produce, produce some, some what a coarse kind of prediction. Uh, we have seen that uh, in order to improve over that, we have seen that conditional random fields are, are good because uh, they introduce into the model the prior uh, knowledge that uh, pixels that are close to each other and pixels that have similar color intensity are likely to belong to the same class and that is useful. And finally, we have seen that uh, learning the whole pipeline end-to-end -end improves significantly the results. So thank you for your attention. I'll happy to take questions.